You're here with Nate's Wait, and this is Crossbeats Productions. So thanks for tuning in, and I really appreciate it. Remember to give that like and hit that subscribe button, hit the bell, so you also get no notifications for these videos that come out. And uh, just remember to give that love on the channel. I uh, really appreciate the comments, by the way. Um, I'm getting some really good stuff on the channel. I'm, I'm so grateful that you guys uh, enjoy the videos that I put out, and um, I'm just glad that I can help some people out there that um, are learning the the whole music thing and behind the music stuff. So uh, this particular tutorial is about how to create chords fast in Studio One. Uh, so what I've done here is created a set of chords and I'll show you exactly how I created it. I'll go recreate it and show you what I did. Um, but basically what I did is I used the uh, the scale here at Scale Quantize. So basically you can set up a scale, you set it to whatever scale you want it to be in, say C sharp for example, which is this uh, particular chord that I'm playing, it's in major and um, you can pretty much play it out. I'll just quickly play you the, the demo that I've got here. I'm using a standard <laughs> standard Studio One instrument because somebody in my comments said, hey, why don't you use standard stuff? So I'm like, all right, well, why not? I'll just use some standard instruments. I'm going to show you how to make it creative and show you how to be creative with the stock plugins that come in Studio One in case you don't have third-party VSTs that you can just go and call on like everybody that seems to have them. Um, <laughs> anyway. So I'll play this chord to you and uh, you can have a listen to that and then I'll show you how I created it and I'll show you how it was effective in, in that process. So let me just play that to you right now. Alright, so some stuff you can do to make it creative. One, you can put reverb on it. Um, that makes it obviously sound a bit wider. Second, you can put a delay on it so it sounds a bit bouncy. There's a couple of different settings you could use with delay. This setting I've got here, as you can see, I'll just zoom in here, it's just this setting here with delay. It's got a bit of reverb that you can put into the delay as well, but I've left that alone. Um, you can put this on a, a doubled, panned, or uh, dotted type of delay. I've left that off because I don't really need that. I'll just play it with it how it is right now. I'll show you what it sounds like. Kind of gives it that kind of bounce so it makes you want to bob your head that's uh, a bit of delay there the next thing you can do is put a gate on it or a gate or effect um, what i've done here is this this um preset that comes in here so there's a bunch of presets in here muck around with it yourself see what you like uh, but this preset here comes up pretty good it sets the automatic to one fourth i've set it to one uh, one bar because then it gives each note um, that gated effect and you'll hear what it sounds like in a second i'll just play it to you now So that could be like a build-up effect to a part of your track. So once I finish this beat, I'll show you guys exactly what I've done, and I'll show you all the stuff that I did to make the beat. But I just wanted to show you this pre empty uh, kind of stuff that you can learn from just uh, using Studio One stuff. So that's the first effects that I've put on the piano. Now, how I created that piano, let me just go in here. I'll just drag another instrument across so you can see what I did. So we're on this the same scale. Um, this is kind of a cool feature as well, in case you don't know about this feature, I'll just close this off here. So as you can see, still highlighting here, if I move down here and I create a new media region, there's no notes here anymore, but there's a way that you can show ghost notes and that is by clicking on this little thing here. Um, it will show you the notes on the actual thing. If you wanted to put those in and move them around just as it was, you could do that. Uh, so I didn't want to do that and I'll just turn that off. Um, then it leaves them so they're not movable, so you can just paste over these notes and it will show you the exact notes that you've already played in your instrument. So say for example, I just kept putting more, more, actually I might just turn this down a bit, it's a bit loud. I'll turn it down to minus 10. That's another tip there, you can turn down your instruments to about minus 10, minus 15, just so you don't blast your speakers out um, when you're using them. It seems to always go really loud volume when they first put them in there, so that's this little tip there. Um, anyway, so back to this. So you can see the ghost notes, so I can just mess around with that. Uh, put all, all kinds of notes in there if I wanted to. Uh, you know, you can set up hotkeys to do all this stuff if you wanted to with the, with the note tool. And go like that. 
Um, the other thing you might want to check out here is your um, your quantization, I guess, in in the bars. Like, say for example, you use a half. If you use that, then it's just going to give you one 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 bar there um, in length. So that's one way to know the kind of length of note you're going to get. So if you mess around with this, it'll give you. See how it gives you the, the length of the note there? So that's an automatic way to change the length of the note. That's an awesome thing if you're messing around with different um, chords and then you want to put a harmonization into that chord. So say for example you want to do that, you can just click on any note here. So, I mean, you can mess around. Just whatever you come up with, just mess around with that. As long as you've got this um, in set on the major and you've got it set to a scale that you want it and then you put this little button here, that'll tell you each note that's in that scale so you can never really go wrong. Um, it's got audition notes which allows you to hear the note. So if you click that off, obviously if you click a note in there, it's not going to let you audition it anymore. So that's, that's what that is there, just so you know. And um, I'll show you how I created it. So pretty much as you can see, I've already shown you, but I'll just show you basically turning off the ghost notes, so we'll just turn those off so we can't see that. And uh, let's say for example we've got this chord here, I might just change that to a full uh, note there. So, alright, we've got, we got C and so, whoa, that's a bit loud there. Okay, so we'll just move that up a scale. So that was in sharp. Let's turn that off. Alright, so move this up to the sharp and we'll keep those there. So that's pretty much there. So you, as you can see, uh, I used the ghost notes to tell me where the notes were. So that was a little kind of a cheat thing I was just showing you, just so you knew. Uh, but that's basically the notes there. So first chord, next chord, move that up there. And this is a quick way that you could audition it. So say for example, you just press your, your uh, enter key and it gets straight back to the start. Now the thing is, I guess you got to pay attention to is that I've got my preferences, my keyboard set to a Logic. Um, so Logic Pro X is what I'm used to using before I started using Studio One. So I set my key commands to Logic. So if I just show you how to do that actually, so you know, I'm pretty sure it's in the preferences. So keyboards, so you can go here and you modify anything that you use. Say for example you're used to Studio One, you can change it to that, or Cubase, or Logic, or Pro Tools. You can import your own stuff, um, but I just use Logic because I'm used to Logic's um, shortcuts and stuff like that. So that's a cool way of doing it. So just change this whilst I'm here. Change that to 250. Alright, cool. So um, basically, like I said, you audition your notes, you can hear where they are. And I can just drag this across here because I know it's the same kind of chord structure that's on that one. Let's go again, just drag that across. And once again, we'll move that across. And we'll just move this all the way down so it's on that key there. All right, cool, so. Okay, so it sounds a bit meh, not all that good right now, but we'll make it sound better. So what I'm gonna do here is, first off, I'll take this cut down, cut off a bit. That's the filter cut off there, so if you put that on there. Just turn this one off as well so I don't get confused about what's going on here. Alright, so that's the thing I was going to show you. So basically, if you hit enter using the logic shortcuts, I just hit the space bar and that shows me the first note on it here if you just click on the next bar so say for example you're making a beat you didn't know what chords to play um, and you want to kind of figure it out so say for example you put in one chord there 
And, uh, oh, actually, I'll just move it up here. And um, you're just playing it on, on your MIDI keyboard and you were just like... And then you're like, oh wait, that doesn't sound right. So I click down to the, the sharp note. So that would be A sharp. So it's C sharp, D sharp, F, A sharp. So, okay, so since I know the notes of the bass chords, then I can kind of make the beat around that and then kind of play around with the chord structure there. So as you can see, it's all of the notes there, C sharp, D sharp, F, and A sharp. So I was just messing around with that, and then I was like, okay, that sounds cool, and I'll just keep going with that. So like I said, you just go to your, your MIDI, and you keep messing around with that, and then you're like, all right, I'll put this one here and see if how that sounds, and sounds good. Another one. Sounds good. That's like kind of the harmonizing note there. And then we'll just move that, say so that's, that sounds right, so. All right, so at least by doing that, I kind of can hear the chords being played. It's kind of what I, I know Dead Mouse does that. He's a, uh, not a, a dance music, but a, a EDM. He produces EDM and he kind of uses that because he doesn't play keyboard. And that's kind of where I kind of, saw stuff like that happening and it's kind of interesting how you can do that. It's really creative. But anyway, that's the chord structure there. So we know. Now, what you can do here, just to make it sound more realistic, is go into this setting here on action, you highlight all your notes, and just go in here and go humanize. So to me, that sounds a bit weak. So what I might have done there in that instance is highlight the bottom bass notes, click on my option, Alt, drag down the bass note to the final bass bottom octave again. All right, so it sounds a little bit better, but still needs a little bit of work. So we'll just go in here, humanize less, getting there. So the next thing you could do then is these buttons here, I normally have them on at the start. They just quantize your notes. So if you turn those off, then you can start moving these around a bit. So say for example, I just zoomed in a bit and I'll go right to the start of the note and I can just move that, uh, move that a bit forward. Move that a bit forward. Now this is just a different way of playing the piano, obviously. It's not, um, it's not like some kind of different thing or anything. It's just a different way that you'd hit the notes. So, I mean, if you're playing it by hand, you'd obviously just play it um, and you get those notes kind of. So if you're just playing it like that, so I'm playing that on my MIDI keyboard, so. So basically that's, that's pretty much the note structure there. So it's like, as if you're playing it by hand, because you're not going to play it perfectly when you play by hand. So it's kind of like just humanizing that, that function there. So let's just play that first note. So as you can hear, it sounds a bit more realistic. Uh, it's just a way of playing it really. So I'll just kind of move these around a bit so that they're not um, all at the same timing and get some creative flow going there uh, and that will help it sound a little more like a human playing it instead of a computer playing it. So let's just move this a bit, move the bass note a bit there. All right, let's go. Bit too loud for my liking. So let's just turn down the velocity on that a bit.
there we go. That's pretty much it. I mean, that's as easy as it is to create a chord. And then, you, like I said before, you can go in there and add your little notes that that kind of add taste to it. So let me just go here, change this to a quarter note, and we'll just add some stuff in there. So say for example, we just put those there, move this around a bit. All right. So, I mean, that's one little thing you can do. Just mess around with it, play around with it, and see what you can come up with. But um, this is a good way to create kind of melodies and, and start chord structures and just get ideas with, with beats that you kind of are trying to make. Um, so, yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give that like and thumbs up. Everything that you can do, subscribe and hit the bell and all that good stuff. And uh, I'll keep you posted with some more videos like this in the future if you guys really like this one. Um, otherwise, um, there's going to be another tutorial coming out in a couple of days, which will be about um, producing drums and how to use EQ and compression on those as a special ask from one of my subscribers there. And um, that'll be coming out in the next couple of days. So otherwise, love you guys. Peace and see you guys on the next one.